those that are listening online, to those that are visiting this morning, good morning. Certainly we praise God for this day and for his many blessings. This morning I just want to remind us that the pandemic changed the way we have church. A lot of people are just listening and watching online. But I am reminded of what God said. Not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. As in the manner of some. But exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the days approaching. God has been good to us. Certainly he has brought Eden from a long ways, from a missionary where people was meeting in their home, Oregon Street, Columbia Avenue, even to 175 Genesee Street. We have been blessed down through the years. God has been good to us. And we are standing on the shoulders of those that have gone on before us. And as we come together to lift up the name of Jesus, let us lift them up because the words say, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And we are fast approaching 100 years that God has blessed us and allowed us to come to this point in life. And so as we continue to carry on the name of Enon, let us do what we're supposed to do. And if you are able to, come on back. We miss you. We miss fellowshipping with you. We miss saying good morning to you. Sometimes we be, don't see one another in so long, we forget one another's name. We start to forget what one another looked like. Come on back to the fellowship and let us praise God together. Amen? Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with bowed heads and humble hearts. God, we come to say thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for how you brought us down through the years. And Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as we assemble ourselves here this morning, God, we ask that you would have your way, doing our lives those things that need to be done. Do, oh God, the things that we are not able to do for ourselves. We ask that you have mercy upon us. God, we thank you for this, the Enon Church family. Oh God, we pray that you continue to bless us, lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. For without you, we can do nothing. But we know that with you, all things are possible. So we ask that you have mercy. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. When it comes your time to call and hours to answer, receive us into your kingdom. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Church. I said praise the Lord Church. Will y'all stand please? Everyone stand. I will be reading Psalms 118. Psalms 118. 1 through 11. Psalms 118, 1 through 11. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, his mercy endure forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endure forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endure forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me. He set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can a man do to me. The Lord is far among from those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desires on those who hate me. 
is it is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in a man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in a princess. All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me, yes, they surrounded me, but the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Let this be a blessing to the reader of the word and to the hearer of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we remain standing for our morning hymn this morning? One of our favorites, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Can we say it all over the sanctuary? Pass me not, pass me not, pass me not, O Gentle Savior. Enter his gates 
with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise.
this morning. Come on, how many come to give God a praise? Can we shout hallelujah? Can we shout hallelujah? Shout hallelujah. Shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Peter, it's just good to be here. Amen. Good morning, Enon. Good morning, Enon. Good morning to my Enon family. And as Reverend Miller expressed to those on virtual, good morning to you as well. Certainly, we are in a good place and a good space. For I don't know anywhere else I'd rather be than with serving and being in the presence of God's Holy Spirit. I'm like David now, Lord, whatever you do, don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. Ah, I believe I have some witnesses. For if he takes it away, we're nothing. But in him, we're something. Do I have a witness? Amen, amen. We want to thank God for our choir and singing the songs of praise. You know, as I reflect back, as what Reverend Miller said earlier, and the members that I've known down through the years that have come through the historical ministry of Enon and parishioners of faith and just the plain people of God that knew what it meant to have God on their side. I think about many, but one comes to mind right about now, and her name was Sister Epps. Some of you might remember her, but she used to always say, I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to praise his name. She's the glory now, but I'm going to use her phrase. I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to praise his name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Mother S was, she had no shame in her game of praising God. She didn't care what anybody else thought of her or did. She came to celebrate and to lift up the name of Jesus. That's why we're here, to lift him up. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of God is coming from the sixth chapter of the gospel according to St. John. And looking at verse 
66, I'll read down to 68 there. You'll find these words, matter of fact, I might as well just read until the Lord say stop. Amen. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Will you bow your heads with me in a moment of thanksgiving? Holy Father, once again, you've placed me before these, your people, to bring a word of hope, to bring a word of expectation, to bring a word to their heart, mind, body, and soul of excitement to know that you are the eternal life that we should believe in. We come now, O oh God, asking you to anchor this, your servant, deep in the well of knowledge, that he will come up, O oh God, to refresh your people, to make them stronger in their faith, to make them wiser from the world, but more than that, to celebrate and to give you all the praises due your holy name. In Jesus' name, may we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. From the, this sixth chapter, beginning at verse 66, we notice that a lot of events have happened to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This particular, or these particular verses, speaks of the prelude. To where he's going. If I can capture your wandering mind, I'd like to take you with me on that journey. We're leaving a place called per Capernaum, and there, before we leave on our way to Galilee, we realize that our Lord and Savior has fed some 5,000. Some have even been healed of the infirmities of their mind and of their body. They were sick that were still following him, even after they witnessed others to be healed. They stayed the course because they knew that their time would come to be healed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus' popularity has come now to a fullness within his life because he reaches that peak of popularity. And let me share this with you, what some might think is good. Popularity can get you killed. When we begin to look at following after the master, we realize that of the miracles that he has done, he's walked on the sea. And in this travel that we have to do, there has to be work done first in Capernaum before we move on to another city. And isn't that just like today, that we have work to do at home before we can move out anywhere else? When we begin to look at what Capernaum represented, it was the chosen base of operations of Jesus when he begins his ministry. Teaching in the synagogue, which is his basic work, he always went, whatever city he entered, into a synagogue. 
The synagogue is that local meeting place and assembly of the Jewish people during the New Testament times. The synagogue as we find it originated during the time after Solomon's temple was destroyed and many of the people were carried away in exile. Local worship and instructions became necessary because people were getting the wrong side of knowing who is their God and what can this God do for them. They began to become lax in service. They became wanderers more so because there were other folk in and around them in the synagogue that were called Gnostics of the day that would call them and cause them not to hear what thus saith the Lord. And when this local worship became to a point of now understanding that the synagogue was that place where prayer is wanting to be made. The synagogue is that place where the spirit of the living God is going to be felt. Even after many of the Jews returned to Jerusalem and rebuilt the temple, places of local worship continued. And by the time of Jesus, these places and these assemblies called the synagogues have grown into many of the worship houses. Synagogues did not just mean or exist because of the Jews that lived in Palestine. But around that A.D. 70 is where we find that it continued in sacrificial worship. And I view the synagogue as uh, that temple by which we all know well. And that's called uh, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. To know that the spirit of God just doesn't rest in uh, the four corners of this establishment, this building. But the temple is you, and the temple is me. And inside of us lies someone greater than you and greater than me. And it's inside that temple that we will find our local worship. When we can't get into the doors of Enon, that ought not stop you from worship. When you leave your home and you off in your own direction, that ought to not stop us from worship. And no matter who we meet along the way, it might not, it, I don't care who it might be, it shouldn't stop you in the way of worship. Because wherever you go, Jesus is right with you. Whoever you talk to, Jesus is right there to give you the words of life and the words of understanding to help somebody else who might be lost in their faith and in their belief. When we look at the faithfulness of the Jews continuing in the temple for these appointed feasts, Jesus customarily went into the synagogue, especially in his hometown of Nazareth. And on that Sabbath, you'll find him before the public in displaying what thus saith his Holy Father. He frequently taught and preached in the synagogues throughout the land. He often went and encountered opposition in the synagogue. Isn't that interesting to know that the synagogue, the place of worship, is where one wants to find their savior. But instead, it became a place of controversy. It became a place whereby folk were confused about what was going on. It became a place Rather than for healing, it came a place where everybody thought of themselves more highly than they ought to think. The synagogue, when it comes to the opposition to know what goes on, it ought to be one thing that goes on. And that is to know how to praise your Savior, to know how to praise your God. There ought not be anything else to hinder that, because in the midst of God's Holy Spirit, there ought to be power in the synagogue. There ought to be power in the church. When people leave uh, this ecclesia, they ought to feel empowered to witness to somebody else. 
Somebody needs to hear a word from heaven. And if they can't hear a word from heaven, then you ought to be able to pray that they hear a word from heaven. Because I'm reminded where prayer goes up, blessings come down. Everybody that comes in the synagogue, comes in the place of worship, they ought to be on one accord. There ought not be so many schisms and isms. There ought to be where one is of one mind and one body. And that oneness comes from Jesus Christ. Here Jesus now preaches and teaches to the strong negative reactions that he would receive from those in the temple, the Sanhedrin council, the temple precinct police, those that had an opposition to get rid of Jesus a long time ago, is now staying right there in the city called Capernaum in this synagogue. And he warns them about giving and praying in order to be seen and praised by other people. Jesus warns them against the hypocrisy of those who parade their righteousness in the synagogue. Jesus, the God of all hope, longs to fill us with his joy and peace as we rely upon him, resulting in life to the fullest. We ought not be able to not recognize him when he comes. You ought to have him already embedded in your heart. When we look for the Savior to come in, it's like we put on blinders to anything else. The devil wants to take us out one by one. The devil wants to come in to disenfranchise us and to come to a point where we're now against each other rather than with each other. The devil is a liar, and Jesus said he's the father of the lie. And because he is that adversary, he is that deceiver, when you come into the house of God, you ought to denounce him in the midst of what you're feeling because I believe that a true believer of God's Holy Spirit ought to be able to recognize and feel when the enemy is present and that's when the power comes from within to speak to him just as you would speak to anybody else. We want to get in the face of others in what we think we know. Well, get in the face of the devil and tell him what you know. When we look at what God was doing in the sanctuary, we begin to see that his results was for life and life to the fullest. It was almost as if Jesus had prodded some encouraging words from his 12 rather than leaving them in doubt. Notice what is going on inside the temple. First of all, the record speaks, and the record says that in the temple, in the synagogue, that as Jesus was talking about his spirit, about how it quickeneth, about how the flesh profiteth nothing, but the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In the midst of his preaching that, he also says that some of you that do not believe my words, some of you will turn away from my words for you begin to believe within your own self. And Jesus said unto the twelve, he said of those that he speaks about in the transformation and in the midst of all that goes on, Jesus says he's given us two examples of looking at the synagogue, to look at who's in the synagogue, to look at the various people in the synagogue. And he says right now he sees two kinds of people. First of all, he sees the devoted disciples that give a lifelong allegiance as the essential means of doing the will of God, more of being a bearer of divine revelation than a link just in religion. The difference of commitment is simple, for the devoted disciple has faith and that is his central concept for towards Christianity. One may be called a Christian only if one has faith, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith came to mean loyalty to a person, 
to whom one is bound by promise or duty. You see, when you become a Christian, you don't be so easily moved and disturbed about what's going on. But what you begin is this, to stay steadfast. Because if you know you take one step, Jesus will take two for you. And if you know you're walking in the righteousness of God, he will be walking with you. Sometimes you might faint along the highway, but he'll be there to pick you up and take you by the hand. Devoted disciples don't become nervous when it comes shaky. They become stronger in their faith because they know who to go to for their faith. When we begin to look at the devoted disciples, they take what God gives them, no matter what the test might be, no matter what they go through. The devoted disciple will stand there and say, Father, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. For faithful and devoted disciple will pledge his allegiance and her allegiance to God. First of all, because they don't care what the world might do, but they have a consideration to know what God may do. The minute you turn your back on God, that's when you have trials and tribulations. But the God that we serve is a God that says in this world, you're going to have trials and you're going to have tribulations. But the God I know said, be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world and a devoted disciple too will overcome. Don't be so easily moved and shaken by the ways of the world, but be steadfast in the Lord. Be anchored deep in the Lord. But not only that, as he looked inside the synagogue, he held his eyes beholding some other folk. Some other folk were there with the devoted disciples. And it's all right to have a mixed group because he spoke about the wheat and the tares. He spoke about that in a parable. He says that if you're good wheat, that means you're going to go somewhere. But if you are tear, you're doing nothing but destroying yourself. But Jesus says on the fringe of the disciples, there seem to be some followers who are not anchored deep in the word, but they're just following after the word. They're not like the Israelites who knew of God by his word. They were more like the Amalekites who tried to get everything that God blessed Israel with and take from them. But God is a God that won't have his people to be hurt. God is a God who will protect his people. God is a God who will stand upright for his service. And just like the Amalekites tried to take away from the Israelites, that one man called Amalek, who was the chief of the Amalek Amalekites, God had to destroy himself. But one thing I found out, that you don't have to enter into battle with anyone. If you just stand still, God will fight your battle. If you just look to the hills, for so whence cometh your help, God will fight your battles. You don't have to enter into anything. You don't have to pick up a weapon. All you need to do is drop to your knees in prayer and God will hear your prayer and God will see your every need. Do I have a witness? Well, in the synagogue, there were the fringe followers. These folk, amen, were not true believers. They were just there, just hanging around, just doing nothing, just watching Jesus, just laying around, just waiting to him to slip up, just waiting around to see what he might do. And when these fringe followers came to know his teaching, they began to scratch their head. They began to give ugly looks. They began to not believe in the Son of God that taketh away the sins of the world. They became distinguished because they were always just hanging around the holy folk. The devoted disciples, they knew of holiness. But the fringe followers wanted to hang around as though osmosis was going to come on them because of the Holy Ghost. Well, do you have a witness, preacher? 
there was a man by the name of Sceva who had some sons and because he had the sons and he saw that what Paul was doing Paul was anointed Paul was appointed Paul was chosen Paul was wise in his effort but everywhere that Paul went when he casted a shadow people stood and stepped in the shadow because they knew he was they were going to be blessed by the man of God that sent for them Paul knew that these people were after him they were mocking him they were thinking that they were like Paul they were offering the Holy Ghost they were trying to get people to believe in them but one thing about it God will stand up for you you see the enemy will talk to you the enemy will try to surround you but one thing that Skeva's sons and him had to learn that when the enemy spoke out they said Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you in other words when the Holy Ghost got on them the Bible said it tore them asunder it beat them up so bad that they left their up their clothes and they ran in the streets naked don't fool with my God because my God is powerful more powerful than a two-edged sword don't fool and mess with my God because I'm mighty afraid if you are fringe follower you might get cut down at the quick and therefore have no hope for tomorrow do I have a witness when I look at fringe followers will you also go away for the question for everybody but then he saw his own 12 you know Jesus had more than just 12 disciples he had many followers he had apostles in the group he had disciples in the group he had the inner selected 12 in the group and he had some other folk that did his will but one thing about it he knows of his own he called the 12 up because they were baffled at that statement about the flesh and the blood the body and the being well one thing about it God had to get it straight through his son and tell him well I know many are going to leave because they can't take the test of time they can't take the pressure they can't take the pain but one thing I know is when God does come to you he takes the pain away from you he gives you a new soliloquy by which you can stand firm in your faith and the disciples went away some went away sorrowful like the man that said to Jesus I've done everything I've done this and I've done that Jesus said you forgot one thing go sell everything you got and then you can follow me the Bible said that young lad he left sorrowful because he didn't want to give up the worldly life he didn't want to give up the good but God left him where he was because the Bible said that he went away sorrowful as a fringe follower but you know what my brothers and my sisters today you don't have to be a fringe follower you can be a devoted disciple you can strip yourself away from everything and follow after him personally I submit to you that there is no one else you should go to you should not be without Christ why because if you're without Christ then you're lost as a sinner you without Christ one is like having on filthy garments rather than what you need to have is on the garments of praise whatever God has transformed you from you ought to rejoice and praise his name whatever he brought you out from you ought to rejoice and praise his name wherever he's directing you to you ought to rejoice and praise his name without Christ your life is condemned when you lose Jesus when you leave Jesus you've lost everything I'm trying to tell you that the darkness of your life is no longer the hope that should be fulfilled to go away from Jesus is like a practical folly in other words what Jesus has done for you you cannot denounce if he's been good to you up to this present time 
you ought to give him the praise if he healed your heart, if he healed your mind, if he caused you to walk and move your legs and arms, you ought to give him the praise. To not praise him is a sin in itself. But one thing I found out, that some did go away. But for those who stayed, they had a lesson in life. Because Jesus now was concerned about their spirit, was concerned about their soul, was concerned about their mind. I'm going to transform their mind. I don't want them to be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed because the cares of the world will soon be over. But when I come again, I want them to receive life and have life abundantly. Do you have life abundantly? Or are you just living for a moment? Are you just living for a day? I don't know about you, but every day is a bonus day. I should have been dead and gone, but he called me to live on a little while longer. For that I praise his name. Do I have a witness? When I think about the defection, I think about now the disciples of Cameron. But the 12 stayed right there because they knew where eternal life was. Peter said, Lord, where shall we go? You have eternal life. You speak eternal life. You are eternal life. This is the second time that Peter's confession was made. Upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do I have a witness? If you have been called the church, then you know you're made out of a rock. The rock of ages left for me. If you know you've been made and born again, you know you are stone, not for stumbling, but a lively stone that people can see and want to pick up and follow. If you believe in Jesus, then you ought to know what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. If you believe in Jesus, you ought to know his word. I've come that you might have life. I've come that you might be the redeemed. Why is that, Lord? Because I'm giving my life for the church. And for that, I can praise him. It should have been me that should have been dead and gone. It should have been me that should have been on the cross. It should have been me that carried the rugged cross. It should have been me that had the plate of crowns. It should have been me. I was a wretch undone, a sinner lost in shame. It should have been me that I needed somebody to call me by my name. Herman, get up from there. Herman, move out from where you are. I got work for you to do. I got an assignment that's going to cause you to cry sometime. I got an assignment that's going to put whips on your back, lashes on your backside. I got an assignment that the people won't love you, but you got to love the people. I got an assignment. You plow the furrow, and I'll make the crop to grow. I got an assignment that wherever I am, you might be there also. Do I have a witness? Is there anybody who been down in the dumps? Is there anybody who had to be raised up? Is there anybody who needed salvation? Is there anybody who called on the name of the Lord? I called on the Lord. I called on the Lord. I called on the Lord until I got an answer. The answer was holiness. The answer was holiness. The answer was holiness. The answer was holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. 
for having us faith. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Not some things, but everything. Thank you, Jesus. Do I have somebody who can praise God with me? I don't want friends followers. I want devoted disciples who are anchored deep, who are anchored deep. I want somebody who know of him to give him praise, to give him honor, to give him glory. Do I have somebody? Will you also go away? Or will you stand the test of time? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when he died for your sins? Were you there when he pleaded in prayer in the garden of Gethsemane where the sweat on his brow was like blood drops. Were you there when he prayed for you and you became saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, not a fringe follower, but a devoted disciple to stay with God every step of the way. Don't sidetrack, stay on that road. Don't back up, let's plow forward. Because at the end of our journey, somebody at the gate I know, somebody at the gate I know will be waiting for us at the gate I know. I don't know which gate I might be in, but at the gate I know, I'm going through one of those gates. And somebody's going to say, servant, you've been faithful over a few things. Come on up and I'll make you rule over many. At the gate I know, somebody is waiting for me. At the gate I know, somebody's waiting for each and every one of you. Let's stay steadfast. Let's stay where God can use us. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the eternal question. Will ye also go away? Thank you, O oh God, for teaching us the way, holding fast the things that we need to hold on to. And in this, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the honor. Lord, let your spirit go forth and do his thing that it will be set out to accomplish what you set it out to do in his name. Touch the hearts and the minds now of those fringe followers that need to become devoted disciples. In Jesus' name, we say amen, amen, amen. At this time, as the ministers come, there may be somebody who might be standing on the fringe of salvation and that of having satanic acts happen in your life. We want to clarify all of that. We want to help you. The only way I know that you can remain positive is having the Prince of Peace in your life. They call his name Jesus. If you're here today and you don't have him in your heart, mind, body, and soul. You heard the preacher preach about him. You heard others talk about him. But this day, salvation will come to your house. Is there one? Is there one that will say, yes, Lord? 
I have faults, I admit it. I'm a sinner that needs to be saved. Would you please help me? Is there one who will step out in faith? Is there one that would like to make that bold step? If you don't want to come, just raise your hand. I'll come and get you. For you are my brother and you are my sister. Do I have one? Do I have one? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I have one? Come on. Come on. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another that is saying within themselves, Lord, I'm messed up. I'm turned upside down. My life is in such a disarray. I need you. I need you. If you're here, we invite you to come. Be a bold soldier. Stand firm in your faith. Are you here? Are you here? We don't want you to go away. We don't want you to go away. We want you to come back home. Come to the place where Zion. Come to the place where the Holy Spirit will take you. Come with us. We'll do you good. Because we have Jesus on our side. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. Is there another? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there another? Is there another? That Jesus is saying, Speak, Lord. Speak to me. Don't worry about nobody else. Speak to me, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you in my life. I need you to help me. Hold me by my hand. If you're here and you haven't held on to his hand, He's saying, give me your hand, and I'll take good care of you. Open up your heart. The doors to your heart, I'll come in and sup with you. Are you here? 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 Hallelujah. 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 Maybe see. Maybe see. It may be seen. Hallelujah. Thank you, minister. Thank you. Praise God. Oh, you can say it. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 We don't want. We don't want anybody. We don't want anybody to go away. We want you to stay. We want you to stay. We don't want you to leave. We want you to stay. We want you to grow with us. Make a difference in somebody's life. You've already have. Just come on. Just come on board. Amen. Amen. Sister Penny, find 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Oh yeah, find 1 Corinthians. Praise God. Praise God. 
find it for me. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Are you ready to take him back? Good morning to the Eden Church family. We praise God this morning for Latoria Gill. She's coming under restoration. And we also have Shaquilla Wesson. She's coming for prayer this morning. Bless you. Amen. All right. All right. An officer's going to uh, take you. Okay. Sister Kim. Okay. Praise God. Bless your holy name. All right. And we'll talk with you then. All right. Bless you. Thank you, Dick Deaconess. Thank you, sis. Bless your hearts. All right. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. We're entering communion, the Lord's Supper, communing one to the other. The Lord left us this ordinance that as often as you do this, you do show forth memory and you do show forth remembrance of my name. Communion one to the other means that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Commun communion and with one another means that we have to learn how to let the Lord lead us in our lives. We can't do it ourselves, church. We have to be dependent upon him. Like the song says, I'm learning to lean on Jesus, amen? And it's not that you've mastered it. It means every day, second of your life, you have to learn how to lean on Jesus. You see, it's very easy for us in our bravado and us in our maturity to say we can handle it on our own. But without God, you can't do anything. But with him, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, amen. And so we need to keep that in the forefront. Reverend Penny Crudup is gonna share with us in the scripture we're getting ready to partake of the Lord's Supper. After she reads the scripture, our beloved sister has come to us for prayer. Amen. Amen. That means she had a Holy Ghost boldness in her to reach out to the church of Jesus Christ to pray for her. How many of us need prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reverend Crudup, be so kind. Thank you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Ministers, I want to ask that you come around Reverend Crudup, can you come down now? 
Reverend Tyler, will you come now? Amen. Ministers, let's just encircle church. If you don't mind standing for those who can in solidarity for our beloved sister in prayer, because somebody stood up for us when we needed it. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Reverend Crude up, I'm gonna let God of mercy, we thank you for this thank time, you, this Jesus. privilege to come before you and to give thanks and to praise your name. God, we're so honored that you said that we could cast all of our cares on you because God, you care for us. And so God, we're grateful that there is no care or concern too big or too small for everything matters to you. And God, you know the petition of our dear sister's heart. God, she just spoke into my ear, but I know you heard and that you were listening. And God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, you're moving on her behalf. God, only you could work work out everything that she needs. So God, we thank you that before she was formed in her mother womb, you knew all about her. You knew her circumstance. You knew her issues. God, you knew what she needed help for. You know where she needs you most. So God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that she belongs to you and you belong to her. And oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that nothing is too hard for you. Oh God, we thank you that even though in the midnight hour she cries, you declare that you will wipe her tears away. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that joy comes in the morning. God, we thank you that nothing should separate her from the love of God. Nothing she's going through. Nothing she's been through. Nothing she will encounter. But God, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your concern. And God, we thank you that she's more than a conqueror through him who loves her. God, we thank you that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against her in judgment it is already condemned. And so God, we thank you that she's more than a conqueror yeah. through him who loves her. So God, we give you glory and we yeah. give you honor that you've already worked it out. Hallelujah to God who knows. Hallelujah to God who restores. Hallelujah to God who redeems. Hallelujah to God who revives. God, we love you and we lift you up and we call it done. In the name of Jesus, I pray with thanksgiving and great expectancy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. To God be praised. Thank you. You may be seated at this time. Ministers, as we take our formation, it was on that day that the Lord found need to have the Last Supper with his disciples, those who were the devoted disciples. He said, we're looking for an upper room where we can come together. And there at the supper table, where the table had been spread, we realized that the 12 had, of those he selected, had stayed the course and followed after him. And he said, at that table, as you read in the word, when he said that one of you are a devil, for you have betrayed me, and they all whispered among themselves, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? He said, it is he who will dip his hand with me in the dish. They identified this traitor by the name of Judas of Iscariot, Iscariot uh, south of Judea, a place whereby wasn't a good place. But nonetheless, as uh, the Word went out, he that will dip his hand with me in the dish. No sooner than Jesus dipped his hand, took sop, Judas of Iscariot's hand went in with him. And he looked at him and said, whatever you do, do it quickly. And immediately he left. He went away to do a dastardly act. But those 11 that were there, he gave them what the meaning of the Last Supper is all about. He said, the bread that you're going to take is the manna from heaven. He spoke of that in the sermonic text about the flesh. He said that when you take heed of that, that I will be with you. 
He also said that I'm no longer going to drink from the fruit of this vine until I drink it anew in my father's kingdom. But the blood, but the wine represented the blood that he shed on Calvary. So as we get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper, let us be mindful that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Jesus Christ stayed on the cross. Jesus Christ came to you to let you know that everything is going to be all right. Jesus Christ was buried in a barred man's tomb. Jesus Christ found out that the grave couldn't hold him because he was earth himself. He formed it. He created from it. Jesus Christ, the Son of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ knew that he would rise again with all power in his hand. And it was on the third day that when he did see the, the, Mary and the disciples, he says, go tell Peter that I want to see him. A personal invitation because of what Peter had done was denied him. Church, don't deny Jesus, but give him the praise. Give him the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we now partake of communion. Bless the bread, bless the wine that we are going to take care of that we ingest into our bodies because it's of you. In Jesus' name, bless us all. May we commune together the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we commune together the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ministers, would you be seated for an hour, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Reverend Miller, did you see a paper I had right here? It's in my Bible. Okay, thank you. Uh, Reverend Miller, come on, stay with me, son. Stay with me. Reverend Miller knows what the work of being an interim pastor is all about. And I know that he can speak for himself. But I know that God has given him grace. And the same grace that God favored him with, he's going to favor me with. Amen. For his grace is sure. And Reverend spoke earlier about the 100th anniversary. Um, would you care to admit something more to that about how if you remain faithful and don't go away, you also will see greater things ahead. I just thank and praise God for 53 years that he has blessed me to be associated with the Enon Church family. Amen. And, Amen. This church has been a blessing to many people and it has been many things to many people. And I just pray that God will continue to bless us and as we go forth and lifting up the name of Jesus because he said, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Praise God. On uh, Thursday the 17th, we're going to have, and this is the announcement for it, of our corporate church business meeting. We invite every member that is on virtual, and if you can come, and the, the, we who are here to come to share in the business of the church that the Lord will help us to move his work further in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. That time is going to start at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock on this third, uh, 17th. Come and show forth favor with God. Our ACED ministry is moving for they have a fall symposium and they're uh, going to do this Saturday, October 14th from 8 to 1. 
and they are calling it Faith in Action. And today you can help buy school supplies for, a sponsor, uh, for our children. And it is also sponsored by our ACED Ministries. And if you go out when you leave, you'll find them there. Also, let us remember that uh, the Women's Day is coming. Uh, Sister Lynette, where are you? Sister Lynette, you want to come and share with us the excitement for Saturday on Hat Hattitude? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, Enon. Praise God from all whom blessings will flow. Yeah. Women's Day is next weekend, August 12th and 13th. That mor Saturday morning, we will have a breakfast and a fashion show called Hattitude and Hills. Our speaker will be Sister um, Elizabeth House from the Bible Way Healing Temple with Pastor Jamie House as the pastor. Please sign up for the breakfast. We will have sheets in the atrium this morning. Also on Sunday morning, we will have Reverend Phyllis Jackson from the Joint Heirs Kingdom Ministries. Our colors are white with turquoise corsages. Please sign up for the breakfast, being a model or a corsage. Also, our choir rehearsal is on Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, will our committee members please stand? Sheila, Courtney, Kim is a part of being our trustee. Lavinia, April, and Cynthia. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So let's come and support our women in their ministry. The assessment is $50. Let's support in the ways that we can to move the women by faith as we know they are included in the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Uh, let us be ever so prayerful as before we leave for our beloved brother, Reverend Jermaine Johnson and his family on the homegoing service that will take place on August 11th. The wake is at 11. The funeral is going to be at 12 of our beloved sister, Lucinda Smith, faithful worker down through the years. Name is already on the roll. Amen. Let's support the family. Let's keep the family in prayer. Let them know that you care. Amen. For if he cares for us, we can care for others. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Uh, the joint board meeting, uh, Deacon Floyd will have um, August 16th at 6 p.m., the joint board meeting. Let's remember that tithes belong to the Lord. Oh, one other thing. Uh, Sister Cheney, is there something that you have to give away or something of money that you just don't want to keep to yourself you want to give it away come come on come on sister Bo. come on come on amen amen i know how some things get heavy on you you got to just give it away amen come on sister Bo. amen all right you're in the hands now sister cheney Good morning. Good morning. To God be the glory. Oh, yeah. I stand before, <clears throat> excuse me, myself and Sister Bola, we stand before you representing the Baptist Minister Wives and Widows Council of the Rochester area where Lady Polly Cherry is our president. And this is the year that we give a scholarship, um, monetary scholarship in the name of Lady Veronica L. Samuels Memorial Scholarship. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> this year, we are pleased to announce the recipient of this scholarship is Ms. Jordan Beatty. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes, Amen. her mother and grandmother family come up, and the deacon, family deacon present. Right. Oh, I'm 
<laughs> the plaque reads as follows. The Baptist Minister Wives and Widows Council of the Rochester and Greater Rochester Area, congratulations. Jordan Beatty on being selected as the recipient of the Veronica L. Samuels Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is being awarded to Jordan Beatty in the graduating year of 2023. The requirements were fulfilled or exceeded by you. Continue with the goals that you have set for yourself. Congratulations, graduate of 2023. To God be the glory. The Baptist Ministers, Wives, and Widows, the Baptist Ministers, Wives, and Widows Council of Rochester and the Greater Rochester Area, Lady Polly A. Cherry, President, August 6, 2023. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you, Platt. And we also have a monetary scholarship in the amount of five hundred dollars. Amen. Amen. Oh, she wants to say something. She's a little shy. All right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You want to say something? Uh, good morning. Well, good, I think it's afternoon. Is it afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Good afternoon That's to it. all the church. Thank you for all for being in my life, and I just thank God for all the opportunities he gave me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Remember that ties belong to the Lord. Let us give our due benevolence to him. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Amen. There used to be a song we used to sing when we used to come back to the six o'clock Lord's Supper. May God be with you. May God be with you. Now may God be with you until we meet again. God bless you. Amen. May heaven smile upon you. Amen.